everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Music Biz Weekly Podcast. One of your two co-hosts, Michael Brandvold, and as always, I'm joined by Jay Gilbert. How you doing, Good Jay? Good morning. Doing well, thanks. We are both in new locations. You are in your new, new house. And I'm no in my, furniture, my but I'm office. in the house. Looking good. Yeah, feels good to have an actual office, not the corner of a living room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll be there next week. I'll have cool. my office next week. Good deal. Um, yeah. So, as typical for the Music Biz Weekly, you know, the last five years I've been doing this, there's no show prep. We fly by the seat of our pants. You know, so we, we just before I hit record here, I'm like, what do we talk about? And then we start brainstorming. I'm like, stop, stop, stop. Let's just hit record. So there's a couple interesting things that that um, have happened over the recent few recent weeks. One of them was you brought up that um, YouTube purchased band page. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts? Well, we should on talk that? a little bit about like what band page is, you know, that they kind of started off as that little widget or app, you know, kind of through Facebook and then Facebook kind of put the kibosh on that and they started off as a standalone after that and seemed to start growing and what's really great about band pages is they kind of syndicate your stuff everywhere, which is really cool. I encourage you to check out their website. But the thing that I thought was most in interesting about Bandpage was when you go on to Spotify and you see those tiles, you can buy merch through Bandpage via Spotify. And I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, I met with those folks recently, uh, actually just like days before the YouTube sale. I knew something was going on, but they couldn't talk about it and it's still unclear what the fallout is going to be to to that acquisition i mean are they going to be the same or is it going to be different is it going to be like you know pandora buying rdo and it just kind of disappears yeah, i don't think that's going to be you know, I've, what happens. I've, got, I've got some interesting feelings on that whole thing i mean they started out as um root music <laughs> not what they were before band page they were root music I think is what was it? Were, I think that was their company. Okay. Um, okay. And 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 we've had them on the show in the past as special guests, and I think we've even talked about them on webinars in the past. Um, I you know when they kind of completely became band page after Facebook essentially screwed their business model, right? Um, because they were the pay they were the thing when remember in. In the dark ages, kids, when Facebook used to allow you to decide where people landed on your Facebook page, you could say, I want you to land on my music app, not my timeline, but my music app. Then they would, yeah. and, and, and basically, the band page back then, that's what it was, was a music app. You would land there, and they had this gated thing where it's like, oh, click the like button, and you can get a free download. And it was, worked phenomenally well for yeah it was cool likes and then all of a sudden yeah. youtube or youtube facebook said no 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 yeah. not and, and not directed at band page but just that overall concept of no we want everybody to land on the timeline of every page you can still have your app buried in there but that was the whole point overnight the traffic to the this music app just disappeared and these guys right. were a startup company Lots of VC funding. I think, I, I don't know, I can't remember in tune of like $16 million maybe. And don't quote me on this, but millions of dollars. No, but financing. you're right. It, it was millions of dollars. And, and they there were some people who thought that would be the death of, of the company. Band page. Yeah. And they were very smart, very savvy, and they found a way to adapt. Yeah, he did. they did a great job sort of pivoting and getting out of the, all right, we're going to provide this little music thing for your Facebook page to two things. They sort of became, and, and I don't think they did a great job. This is my personal opinion of really marketing either one of these. And that's the To me, that was the big problem. They had a great commerce thing for selling experiences you could use band page to sell vip experiences basically mm -hmm. phenomenal a great revenue stream for bands right. and um it, it it didn't really they they didn't really 
do much with band page and then there was the whole concept of well come to band page you update once in band page and we'll update your website your facebook your twitter your blah your blah you know we can, we'll, well that's update. where i saw the value michael was what you just mentioned that syndication you know it started off with just a handful and and i've got it in front of me i'll, I'll read some of these when you you know Go you in and photo. plug in your stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It, it goes to Spotify, Shazam, YouTube, Google, Deezer, Rhapsody, Groove, Kick, SoundCloud, Vivo, iHeartRadio, Live Nation, StubHub, Lyric Fine, and of course, Facebook and Twitter. And for, I felt, you know, for an artist, that was pretty darn cool that you could make sure that your image was correct, updated, and consistent across multiple platforms. And that you kind of had that control without necessarily, and, and there's nothing wrong with a tune core. There's nothing wrong with uh, the Orchard or any of these other aggregators and digital service providers. Those things are all great. But this, for the kind of DIY guys, I thought it was pretty compelling that you could do all of that in you know one-stop shopping. But you know where I think the problem again was in their marketing of this, of their getting this message out here, because one. I think they were they were battling this concept of we will you do it once here and we'll send it out everywhere. Historically, that never works, and I'm not saying this is about band page. It's just many apps right. that are out there. Yep, many apps that are out there claim to do that, and it's never quite that simple. It's just once, and they take care of it everywhere. You usually and and, and I know this from experience. You usually end up having to go to the website and then tweak it copy a little bit or change this up a little bit or or after a while yeah. you learn that you get better response if you don't use one distribution source but you make a separate post to Facebook that's geared towards Facebook and a separate one towards Twitter that's geared to towards Twitter and and all this other stuff so that kind of got lost um, the ability for band page to drive your merchandise into Spotify awesome but again yeah I'm not sure they really did a great job telling people that you yeah, can Yeah, I think do people this. stumbled upon it. I think they found it. What I love about that program is that as an artist, they don't take a cut. They don't take – you don't have to pay them. You can do all of this syndication basically for free. Where they make their money is on the merch side. They get 15% of – merch sales. And I was just looking over some of the notes from when, when I met with them and a couple of things that I thought were really cool. One is that Bandpage powers uh, Shazam profile images, which I, I thought was pretty cool. They have a, um, a Rhapsody partnership where it, it's like tour support. It's ECRM emails uh, in, in tour markets, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, so but this all comes back to a point that you just made. There's a lot of great features here, but until I sat down and had coffee with them, I wasn't really aware who they, who of. Who are they and telling I'm, them? I'm like you. I I go on and kind of read as much about this stuff as I can. And if a guy like you or me doesn't really understand what their offering is, then maybe there's a misstep on the marketing and branding and messaging yeah, part. Yeah, and I and I think that's. That's what it was. It's like, okay, I know of Bandpage, but didn't really have a full, deep understanding of everything that it offered. And nobody was out there really pushing it, promoting it, evangelizing it, so to speak. Yes. Um, and it just kind yeah. of got <laughs> lost. Now, the other thing that I found interesting about the YouTube thing is about a couple days after the sale was announced, I... I if we had show prep, I would have found this article. But there was an article that talked about the sale, and the speculation really was the sale was more of they had to sell because this is the only way they were going to get any return on the VC investment into this Or even company. survive. Or even right? survive. That's, I think I read the same thing, that there was some financial things. And again, if we would have prepped, I'd have that in front of us. That, but that, that the ultimate you, purchase was not a right. – wasn't, wasn't – the purchase price was never revealed, but the speculation was it wasn't a big purchase. 
it was basically no, I had, a way I had speculation for... of like eight million, ten million, and that was basically to cover that that VC investment. Get, getting some money back to the VCs, whether it was all or partial, I don't know. Um, and and you know, I I live in the San Francisco area, so startups are all over the news here. You start recognizing that stuff, and not just in the music yeah. industry, but you just start recognizing that in in startup companies and sales and you start going oh i recognize what's going on there that really wasn't somebody going i really want this product bad it was more of we need to sell to anybody who will give us some money now what will youtube do with this i gotta tell you uh, my first take is nothing it's gonna just die on the vine i hope not i hope it doesn't right now like I said, we use the the comparison of Pandora and RDO, where it's kind of been uh, absorbed, and we're waiting to kind of see how it's integrated, if it's integrated. With this, it's still live, it's still active, it's still something that's being used. I know one of my clients is getting in deep uh, with Bandpage, which is a, a beautiful thing. I was looking over their their site. And oh, I mean, let me just ask you, though. Wouldn't you have a little concern about getting in deep with Bandpage right now after you know they've just been sold and you don't know what their future holds? Maybe. I think as long as, like, right now they're continuing to do what they do, and they're doing it pretty well, whether it's the merch through Spotify, whether it's kind of the aggregating, you know, to key places like Shazam, a small company like one of my clients, they don't have the resources to manage all of these different outlets on their own. So they really rely on aggregators like Bandpage. And they've looked at other alternatives like Bandpage. And some are strong with the DSPs. Some are strong with some of the smaller uh, services. Nobody seems to kind of cover the same area that Bandpage does. And I was looking at their website. It's not just new developing artists like maybe it was in the beginning. You know, they've got, I'm looking at this list here. I won't read the whole thing, but there's a few in here like Springsteen, Carrie Underwood, you know, Common, uh, McCartney, you know, Snoop Dogg, Usher, Pink. There's, they've got some substantial, you know, players in the space, new developing as well as heritage artists. So I, my gut tells me that YouTube's going to, you know, and of course that's owned by Google. That's a large company. They don't necessarily need this to be profitable immediately. It is a good aggregator. It is a good service. I'm looking to see how they're going to maybe integrate that into um, their music offering. Because the way, and, and you and I have mentioned this a couple of times, you look at Google and they've got. Google Play Music, they've got YouTube Red, you know, and I think from what I've been reading, their download business, say with, uh, you know, uh, Google Play is kind of flat, which sounds bad, but these days with people moving to streaming, downloading is crashing hard, so if you're flat, and yes, they're a very small percentage of the market, but I think it's going to be really interesting to see what happens under that Google umbrella with their, not just band page, but with their music offering, right? They've got, you know, several different services there. It's, it almost seems like it's that um, consolidation that you and I have been talking about the last couple of weeks. Is It, it seems like it's got to go there. It's got to consolidate. It's, if it's going to compete with you know, on the streaming side with Spotify and Apple Music or Slacker or whoever, there's got to be some kind of a consolidation there of all these, you know, individual services because the dirty little secret, and I know you know this, is that the number one streaming service is YouTube. And it's by a large margin, you know, it's maybe not paying out the kind of revenue that rights holders would like, but it still dwarfs 
you know, all these other music services because they don't have to play by the rules. It's whack-a-mole, right? You can find bootlegs, you can find live performances, rehearsals, uh, radio station performances, and as well as all these, you know, what they call pseudo videos. And, and I learned something new this last week about pseudo videos, which for those who don't know, it's, you know, when you go on YouTube and you see the album cover and it basically streams a track or the full album, it's not really a video. Mm -hmm. They call it a pseudo video. Well, uh, YouTube is now auto-generating those. So I, I went on YouTube um, about a week ago and found one of my clients. There were all of these pseudo videos generated, and I called my client and said, "Did you, you know, create these?" So they were they're, they're gener auto -generated. generated by YouTube under yes. what channel? What channel do they show up as then? Well, they're they're not showing up in a particular channel. They're just being generated and putting up there so you can find them in search. The reason it was concerning to me was some of the metadata was wrong. But but I guess that's my question. So you find them in search and you click the play button. What, you know, when you go in there in a YouTube video, you can see who posts it. Does it say YouTube? Does it say no, Google? No, it says the rights holder. It, it, it says that it was posted by the rights holder. Interesting. Um, I don't want I don't want to name names, but this this label that I'm working for, they have a distributor and it listed their distributor as the so person. So the distributor's that, doing it. Is probably But they're not. I called the distributor. They had, they'd had no idea that these uh, videos were being auto-generated. Yeah. I mean, I I would believe they have no idea, but I would also believe in a second that at some point in time YouTube probably sent some email mass email out to distributors and one line in there said oh we have a new feature that starts on march 1st we are going to be auto generating that could be these for you be. unless you opt out by clicking this <laughs> right and let's let's be you know transparent here you're making money you know they're right. they're generating revenue ad revenue on those pseudo videos so i don't think a lot of people are going to complain because when you we when you go to YouTube and you say, how can we work better with you? They say, we want more content. So when you release a song, give us a pseudo video. Give us a lyric video. Give us a live video. Give us the regular video. You know what I mean? Uh, User-generated content. They want as much content for obvious reasons as possible, and then that will generate more views, more advertising, and you participate in that. Right. You know, getting back to band page and YouTube, sure. I mean, the one thing that concerns me about this is, you know, first of all, I think what band page has is cool, great features. And the people at band page were passionate about bands and music. I've met with them. You've met with them. Google slash YouTube is a completely different story. Yeah. And I've had meetings with them and I've seen how they, they, they are not fast movers. They are not fast to adopt things um quite often they go backwards and, and that, music isn't their core business and that's not their core business so that's what worries me about the band page acquisition is if yeah. they were acquired by another sort of equally independent music startup company then there's some all right i, I can get what they're trying to do but they were acquired by the 12,000 pound gorilla who frankly just sees music as a line item in a budget and what they go what are they going to do with band page it well let's put it this way it wouldn't phase Google or YouTube in a second to blink their eye and say you know what turn it off we have no concern. We, could. we have no concern what that means to all the bands that are using it. It doesn't bother them one bit. That's right. what I'm saying. Right. But there's not a lot of risk, right? I mean, this is a, they got it for a steel price probably. It sounds like they got it but they, you know, they're going to have to sale. invest. They will have to invest time, money, manpower to integrate it. I mean, yeah. to keep it just as its own, sure, that's still up and running. But you don't acquire somebody and just say, all right, well, now let's just let it sit out there and continue to be its own business. You're doing this because you're hoping to integrate it into something. Are you going to integrate right. it into YouTube? Are you going to integrate it into Google Play? Are you going to integrate it into Google Hangouts? Are you going to take right. a core feature of band page and suck that in and get rid of the rest? You know, yeah. that's 
that's ultimately what I would see the benefit coming from this is. And there, yes, and there is value in the metadata. They have such great metadata and images, and all, because they're aggregating and syndicating all of that information out, they must have a pretty good database and maybe even a system that could be valuable to. Well, you know, and, and as, as you're talking about this, it just, why would um, YouTube, Google Play, want to continue to have band page push merchandise into Spotify? Maybe at some point it, it's being pushed through YouTube and well, I mean, play wouldn't, wouldn't, YouTube I Red. Mean, I would sit here and if, I can just see the, the, the product meetings going. Somebody is literally just the product manager going, Spotify is a competitor of ours. Get it out of there. Put it into Google Play. Remove Interesting. it. Interesting. I hadn't thought of that. Remove but, it. Why? Yeah. Why are we using the product we just bought to better benefit to our, promote a competitor? Our competitor. Get us out of there. Are they going to immediately have it integrated into Google Play, into YouTube? I mean, I think if they do that, that would be great. I mean, to me, I would love to see that. If 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 the Lock core eyeballs. core features of Band Page were were elegantly integrated into YouTube. More than anything else, I think that would be freaking awesome. Um, I, but my worry is they just don't, they're not a fast moving company when it comes to that stuff. No. You know, it could be, no. it could be a year, it could be two years before the first features are rolled out and integrated in a way that you, I got to tell right. you, I mean, it's, it, it's not a month goes by where I'm in YouTube and I'm going, where did this feature come from? I never knew this existed. Mm -hmm. gee there's this advanced feature that i can do this 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 and this they don't tell you this stuff you stumble across it so and and as we talked about with google play when we were talking about google play and youtube red one of our issues was their marketing of their service yeah, yeah. so it's just it just it bothers me it worries me because it's like i just see this as a potential first step in the death of a cool little product band page yeah i hope and so I my, hope, my I gut hope not i hope not, not but it just it it worries me that it was yeah that it was google i mean and not because i i'm an apple head but if apple had purchased it i wouldn't have these same fears mm mm-hmm. You would think that it would get integrated into something and still be useful. Yeah. yeah. My yeah. concern, you know, like when we were talking about RDO and, and talking about some of the streaming and internet radio, we both thought that RDO was this cool little company. And yeah, we knew there was going to be some consolidation, but I was still a little sad, you know, when, when Pandora bought RDO. But then I started thinking about it. Well, Pandora, you know, internet radio, it's kind of a different service. RDO, you know, it's more of a, you know, streaming service and not internet radio. Be kind of, It could be cool if they integrated them and they swallow them up and we have yet to see them kind of come back out and, and launch that product. And it's kind of sad for me because I love that company so much. And now when it's the same kind of thing with Bandpage. I really dig that company, and I think they're really cool, and, and I love that they survived, and they're scrappy. Yeah, uh, that, that they, were, they were able to, they, that. they almost got killed yeah. by Facebook, and they pivoted and came back strong yeah. and survived. I mean, I'm, I'm yeah. rooting for them. But, you know, the, the, the last thing, and I've seen this happen in deals, is many times somebody buys another company for nothing more than contracts and rights. And and I'm not saying this is the case with Bandpage, but YouTube might sit here and go, well, all we're interested in is the fact that Bandpage had an existing contract with so-and-so. Mm -hmm. And by us buying them, we kind of take on the contracts. That's we, a good point. We, you know, I've seen companies in the past outside of music, mergers, acquisitions. We go out mm -hmm. and acquire a company. And I had a, I had an old CEO who once said, all we're buying is the file cabinet in the company. We don't want yeah. the people. We don't want the buildings. We don't want the machinery. We don't want, we don't want any other physical assets. All right. that stuff we're going to liquidate. And All how many times have you seen companies just buy other companies just for their patents or their the patents. intellectual property? Or 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 startups will 
many times acquire another company only because they want to keep two of the developers on because those two developers are really smart. Yeah. And we're going to put those developers on our product and that's it. We close everything else down. We, we, we basically purchase the contracts for this. So again, I'm not saying that I have any insight of that's happening with Bandpage, but those types of deals do happen out there. Mm -hmm. um, and those are the things that, that large companies look at. You're not always looking at it going, I love the product. I want to integrate the product. I want to do better for the community. You know, a, a, there are other a, reasons. a chief operating officer sitting <laughs> yeah. there going, you know what, that <laughs> file cabinet has X amount of contracts at a value of $10 million in there. And if we can buy this for $8 million and keep those contracts, we just saved ourselves a lot of money. Yeah. The rest of the yeah. product, we don't care about. So I, 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 I want to see what YouTube's going to do with this. I and do the, too. And the, and the fact that it's been very quiet is also a little worrisome. Yeah. At least they didn't shutter it. And that, that encourages me that they didn't buy it and then shut they it shut down. It right away. They're, right now, it's kind of business as usual. And this, it's been you know a, a couple of months so far. So th like I say, I, I think that's encouraging. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how it's integrated, if it's integrated, because there's always that possibility that they could keep it as a standalone business. I mean, Google as a company has tons of different businesses, right? Um, that that run the gamut from self-driving cars to you know everything. I mean, they do a lot of different things. Uh, I think we're assuming since it's a music-centric company, Bandpage, that it would be a natural fit with the music areas of Google, Google Play, YouTube Red, whatever. <laughs> but it could be left alone. It could be a standalone and, and could grow. And maybe they, there's somebody, whether there's patents, whether there's intellectual property there, whether it's the metadata and the images, <laughs> there, there could be some other self-serving uh, things there that could help Google. Um, but... Yeah, I, I hope they I hope they keep it intact or make it better and stronger. It was a lean, you know, machine. There wasn't a ton of employees there. It you know, it wasn't one of those situations where they had to come in and lay off a hundred people. So um I think there's a lot of value in Bandpage. I think it was a smart acquisition for them if they use it. If and, they use it. That's that's yeah. the big thing. And you know That's a big question mark. I, I would end this with any artist who's using band page or just anything else like that, you know, you really do have to pay attention to the business. <laughs> yeah, because absolutely. You don't, you may not realize it, but the vast majority of these music companies are startups. They're being funded by some venture capital somewhere. Right. And, and they get that, acquired. That, that, that they means get shut that down at any point in time. <laughs> Things can change overnight, not in the best interest of the company or even the people working at the company because, and I've seen this happen, you know, the board of directors sits down and says, we're not putting any more money in this company. That means you've got to cut costs, you've got to cut features, you've got to stop development, um, or they come in and they say, we want an exit strategy. And, you know, that's... That's scary. What's an exit yeah. strategy? Because an exit strategy of venture capitalist a lot of times is I just want my money back. I don't care how you get or it. Or as boost. much of it as I can. As much of it as I can because I see no future now. So yeah. sell. And I'm not going to continue to fund this. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, you got to pay attention to that because if you're putting your band's career into some of these companies, not that you would wake up overnight and it could be gone, but you could wake up overnight and get a notice that says we've been sold and you have 60 days to do something, move yeah. to another platform or whatever. Um, just, you know, that's one of the things I always am aware of when, when I'm looking at services is how long have they been around? You know, do a couple Google searches and see if there's rumors about them. Yeah, what um, the risk is. What the risk is. 
Um, and then once you're working with them, just pay attention to them in the news. You know, set up a Google News alert. To, I was just going to gonna say, watch, yeah, set up a Google what's alert. Going on because, yeah, you know, you're not only interested in a new feature, but you might be interested in the fact that the board of directors just fired the CEO. Really? What does that yeah. mean? Well, you just touched on something I think is a key point. And for those who have never used a, a Google alert, you know, I use dozens of these things and they help so much. It's so simple to set up in Google. Uh, a Google alert is basically you, you just tell it, Keyword. you just Google it. Yeah. And you say, I'm interested in this company or this person or this, this keyword. And you can set it up for daily. I have it weekly. And they'll send you an email and say, well, here are all the stories in the news about that topic or that company that you want to know about. And at a glance, once a week, you can kind of get a sense of what's going on with those companies that you're, that you're using, like a band page. And you would be hip to the YouTube sale or whatever it is by just setting up a simple Google alert. To, yep. to a lot of people, that's very rudimentary. But to some people, you know, maybe they haven't used it. It's a great tool. Yeah, yeah, I totally recommend it. You know, on that, I mean, we, we just riffed for 30 minutes. <laughs> I don't think we even need to go into that's what we do. I, I had a second potential topic we could discuss. I think we just leave it at this. Um, it was a really good discussion. I, yeah. You know, I, you know, I would love to hear what you, our listeners, what your thoughts are on band page and YouTube's acquisition. And are you worried? Are you not worried? Uh, what would you like to see YouTube do with it? Um, you know, it's, it's something we got to pay attention to. Absolutely. Yeah. Good All discussion. Right. Good discussion. Until next week, everyone. Thank you. See you guys.